What's up, everyone? Welcome to Barstool Breakdown. Today is Saturday, September 30th, and we got a great show for you today. We talk a little bit of Ryder Cup. We talk a little bit of Most Dangerous Game, everything else, and we got an interview with Chris Castellani. Let's get it. It gets dirty as fuck. This is that? I should be over at All right, welcome to Barstool Breakdown. I'm Frankie here with my co-host Jonathan. How we doing, Jonathan? Yeah, it's been a long week. Uh, you know, getting my move. I'm moving back to Ohio this weekend. Uh, but you know, I enjoyed Barstool the whole way. Uh, I, just, I don't really. Yeah, know where I did you a thing. Start. What would you do? I did a thing. Um, I didn't get my uh, Sandman shout out segment like you did, but I wrote the fastest two minutes at Barstool. We start with Barstool Radio, where Charlie Kelly Keeg sounded like she was talking about bird law while defending Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's relationship. And Kevin McAllister Clancy no longer felt home alone as all the support from the stoolies and said, Travis, your girlfriend, woof. Some spread. We head over to a cold and gloomy Colorado for the finale of Barstool's Most Dangerous Game, where Francis Monte Ellis was not a pacer as he lost in the game and also lost his mind. Did you hear that speech, Tom? Tough look. In the end, Megan was owed money as Spider creepy crawled his way to victory, but not before dropping a bomb that he would split the money with Megan. Huh? Huh? <laughs> what? What? In Chicago, the Yak was shocked as Steven Seagal Shea wished injury on his opponent. Of course, Kyle Trevor Bauer had his back, but that didn't help in the cash queue as Barstool Kate Middleton reigned supreme. That must be why she named her son Cash Boom. What? <laughs> Finally, we wrap up in North Carolina at the Ryder Cup, where Big Cat used Team Portnoy as a scratching post and tore it up on day one. But there would be a comeback tour on day two as Team Dave Matthews Band Portnoy earned a point and a half to have it all come down to day three. On day three, Captain Stabbin Portnoy was all over Daniel Michael Rappaport like the herpes disease. But in one lapse of judgment, Portnoy left Rappaport's side and he hit the shot of the tournament. Money man, boom. Seven, team Portnoy, two. What? Yeah, that was uh, good. that was tough. <laughs> it took me a while to write that. I'm not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, I understand now how uh, just reading that stuff, dude. It's like that's a lot of names. There's a lot of shit going on there. So shout yeah, out Nick they, and uh, that's why they bring in the old Nick, PMT yeah. crew. Um, I say we either start with Dangerous Game or Ryder Cup. I will let you pick which one you want to start with. Sure, we'll just, I'll go Ryder Cup. That's top of my board here. Uh, yeah, I mean that was the best content I've seen from Barstool in ages i felt like i mean unbelievable yeah, very content. good very good uh i was kind of disappointed in frankie and uh who was it kirk was it? yeah frankie and kirk in their match and they how they split they probably should have won that match but they let him yeah that was around. a choke yeah big but, time uh, choke. but it is i mean it was good because it made the last day that much more interesting there was definitely no overtime <laughs> it was you know winner goes home uh winner go home and uh yeah big cats team pulled it out and uh, yeah, it know, was good. Danny Rapp, like you said, in that two minutes that the money man shot that he had was, yep. you know, huge because Davy shit talker was out to play. Yeah, I mean, I had here the Hank Hank Rappaport versus Francis and Jerry. Hank played out of his mind. I'm going to just give him credit where credit's due. As much as we talk shit about Hank as stoolies playing golf because of PMT, he played lights out in that match. He was unbelievable. Shout out Hank. Um, and they pulled off the win against Francis and Jerry. Jerry was terrible. Francis was god awful. Yeah, um, Francis is really bad. Yeah, I don't know what the deal was with him. Um, but then Big Cat, PFT, and then versus Arian and Trent. What a waxing that was. Trent and Arian just went off. Arian's good as fuck, dude. Yeah, oh He's yeah. A he, golfer, was, he, was, he was there was a YouTube comment that said uh realizing Arian is the best player on Team Portnoy throughout this, it, it was not on my bingo card. Yeah, like, well, it's uh, I mean he was the best it was hilarious too because of course Dave just kept going to Frankie. One year, Frank. Frankie's been playing one year. Can you believe it? Yeah, Can you believe right. he's playing one year? Which of course getting in Frankie's head. Um, which is my next point. I had Frankie and Kirk versus Riggs and Dave. Dave is always in his head, and that is why I mean, I don't even know what happened with Kirk because Kirk missed a couple putts too. I was pretty shocked. Um, which obviously, like you said, though, made the last match awesome, intense. Um, I was really surprised that Francis didn't even want to do the coin flip. 
Um, I feel like that's just such a pussy move. I feel like yeah, just I backed out. him up last week, and then this week he just like I don't know. I did not have a fond week of Francis. Let's put it that way. He was walk he was walking in the uh the line during Kurt's Kirk's putt. And then after Kirk hits it, he goes, fuck you, Francis. Again, just yeah. like just like they were saying in that uh, on Barstool Radio. So shout out Team Big Cat with the W. Uh, I was rooting for them just because I like the whole uh, talk with your game, not with your mouth, even though it makes for great content. I've always been the uh, don't talk shit, you know, show it, don't don't say it. So that was my take. Yeah, he didn't come out. He, he didn't come out looking good at all this week, but uh I mean, it is what it is, but yeah, the uh, Kirk Kirk was electric the whole time. He really, you know, made the content uh, great coming out of the Ryder Cup. Davy shit talker, like I said last day, was electric. He's just talking to everybody, and then it kind of led into everyone talking shit to each other throughout the match. Yeah. So that was fun. Uh, yeah, great content. I hope that you know they, you know, they do it again in the future because the Ryder Cup is awesome. And then leading right into the Ryder Cup, you know, the timing of they released it was perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, the Ryder Cup is uh, all-time content, in my opinion, for sure. Yeah, as I've mentioned on Stooley Wednesday, and I think I've said it on this pod even before, I don't like golf. I'm not a fan of golf. I even, like, today was putting trying to put on Ryder Cup highlights just to, like, see what's going on, and I just couldn't even follow. But this Barstool stuff, it has got me hooked. I'm watching it every day, almost the second it comes out. Um, so shout out to all those guys that did all that work behind the scenes because that shit was awesome. All right, well, let's move into Dangerous Game then, since that's the other big-time production that was going on this week. Um, my first note, again, it's tough, but Francis was sad, sad, and mad, mad. I mean, what a speech. I know he tried to, you know, backtrack it and, you know, whatever, you know, backpedal everything he did and said because it was a show, whatever, but to write those words down, you're fucking crazy, dude. Um, yeah, so- that was a big long... That was a very heated speech. It was like... So in the first season, most dangerous game, I remember Billy football, like going off in council because he was voted yeah. out early. He just like never let, let it go. Yeah. Uh, and he was all pissed off and then talking shit to him. But yeah, Francis was just a deliberate, just tried to like dismantle Rudy, but it was hilarious because Rudy's like laughing in his face as he's saying these things. Uh, I yeah. The, the speech was something else. It definitely played into the theatrics of the show. So I was cool with it. Like I understand like, you know, the theater side of it, but. I mean, he took it way too personal, bro. It's a yeah, game. Well, Get the fuck over it. Like, first of all, fine. he also said he also said this was not a French. This was a manipulative thing in your. And I'm like, Rudy's yeah. not that smart, dude. Shout out, Rudy. Love you, bro. You know, I love you. Always support you on Twitch and everything. But he's not that smart to fucking make a fake friendship that you're gonna you're gonna dismantle your brain, dude. You're a freaking Harvard graduate, Fordham dropout. Um, like, <laughs> you got a big brain, dude. You know how to use it. And for him to think that Rudy was out like smarting him was almost insane to me. Um, and once again, I'll say it just to be on record. I stand with Spider. Whatever the fuck his decision is, I hope his decision is to keep all the money. Straight no, up. I, I mean, Megan I, making I money is my did. best friend, like we've talked about forever. But I didn't see any sort of happiness from her for getting 12 5. I would have been fucking jumping up and down, riding Spider like a fucking, you know. I would have been like, thank you so much, man. And it was just kind of like, yeah, well, 12 better. I guess 12 fives better than nothing. And right. I was like, what? So, what is your take on that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, in the end, really, Spider played the game, you know, by voting, yeah. voting for Rudy, he kind of guaranteed himself the win. Hell and yeah. that's, that's how you play the game. So, like, you can't be mad at Spider for it. I think it's kind of crazy that he decided to, uh, you know, to uh, split. Because yeah. Yeah, I mean, you won the game, bro. Like Dave said, like for surviving Barstool, if anyone talks about splits, they're fired immediately. Like, see you later. Like, no questions asked. Uh, because that's you know, it kind of takes away from the finale of it all. Like, you, even though like you, you're gonna see the winner. Like, you need to see like the the other people like be upset about it too, because that just plays in like to like I said earlier, the theatrics of the show. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then she was like very like you know didn't seem very grateful. She probably feels like she got fucked over in the end, which is probably true. But yeah, I mean, but that's the game yeah. again. Like there's still three other people that voted for Spider. Like you know, yeah. Who, I just I'm just so confused because I understand where she's at. Like oh well, if he would have just held his word, then I would have won. Yeah, but then he would have lost. Like yeah, uh, if I'm Spider, game. I'm not gonna go in there and voting for her, knowing I'm gonna fucking lose. That's what Sass did. Sass did yeah. that the first year. He voted for Tommy, thinking, "Oh, it's a throwaway vote, whatever." And then Tommy won because of that vote. So, right. I don't know. I stand with Spider. I hope he keeps all the money. As much as I love Megan, and I hope you know maybe they work something out and they get something. She just didn't seem like she even wanted the money. Um, she just seemed like 
whatever about it. Uh, maybe that's because, like Francis said, they both didn't think that it was true, that he was never going to give it. But in the moment right then and there, it just seemed like it was very genuine. So I'm just very confused. And uh, yeah, shout out Spider. And yeah, he's, the, he's a beast. And then, <laughs> yeah, he, he was <laughs> he was insufferable at times. But uh, I mean, the only other notes I have on the show really was, you know, uh, Megan being second. We covered that. Uh, Rudy winning the last uh, thing and then eliminating Grace on spot and Grace kind of having a breakdown kind of made me feel sad. But again, part of the game and you knew that if yep. any of those three won, that Grace was going to get out. Uh, so she had to, she had to have won that and she couldn't. I mean, she had like a really gross puke on camera. Uh, yeah, that was. And then uh, yeah, the none of the speeches, sucked. none of like the personal speeches that they gave like really amazed me. Like I feel like last year's speeches, like Tom yeah. and Sass definitely crushed. Like I didn't get that from this one. I thought I would with Rudy. Like they did like a whole little thing of him writing his speech, but it wasn't very good. He kind of just talked about how he played the game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that's all I have. You know, Spider. Spider was the vibes guy the whole time. He was he was like mixing it up with everybody, making sure. I mean, there was that one point that Pat tried to take him out, and then he took him out next week. Like uh, Spider played the game really well, and he he was d- deserving uh, of this crown. And yeah, Francis is uh, his speech is his. It's gonna live on in infamy for sure. Yeah, I mean, if Spider wouldn't have voted for Megan, or I mean, if he would have voted for Megan, then I agree that that he definitely didn't shouldn't have won the game, and that was it. But the fact that he voted like for Rudy, knowing that. The votes were going to swing his way. That's the fucking game, dude. That's how you win. Right. So, yeah. Shout out, Spider. All right. Well, that'll wrap up Dangerous Game. Let's move over to Barstool Radio, uh, which first, you know, first day of the week was the whole Swift and Kelsey relationship nonstop with Kelly Keegs. Um, I mentioned it earlier. Shit. Yeah. I mentioned it earlier. She sounded like Charlie Kelly talking about bird law because it was just insane. She was talking in circles how Travis Kelsey doesn't deserve her and this is all fake and whatever. And then like two seconds later, they were dating and she had to like come on and be like, well, you know, if she's happy and, you know, I think still think he's a douchebag and whatever. But it was just funny to see her try to backtrack. Yeah, he, he's always doing that black scent stuff. And then, he, you know, he's he's weird. He, he's very he weird. definitely is a cringe oh, machine, dude, for yeah. sure. No doubt about that. A weird guy. Uh, he would but, probably wear the shirt that I'm wearing right now. So yeah, but you get Taylor, you get Taylor Swift in your box. I guess you're going to be talking about it, but uh, yeah, and, and I kind of there's a couple of Barstool guys that said this this week. I don't get the Swift, the hype over Swift. Like she's she doesn't do it for me. She doesn't like uh, a quick shout out to P, uh, PMT PFT was saying yeah. I you know what if if Taylor Swift was like let's get it on, uh, you know take that dick out of those pants. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd say no. He's staying in these pants. So, yeah. Uh, See, I don't know about that, but I will say someone said that she was a 7.1. Wasn't me. Stu. Not going to say that I don't stand with Stu. Yeah. Just saying. No, she doesn't. She doesn't, like, you know, get you going like that. She's got a beautiful voice. I'd let her sing to me, yeah, of course. But uh, other, other than that, like looks wise, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's nothing, I, nothing really right. I, home I about. can't. Like, I've learned my sister's a Swifty. I've learned I just, I got nothing to say about her. That's. Right. <laughs> That's the old, uh, you ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't say anything at all. So I will say nothing. Um, yeah, you know, she's amazing. Fire, Great for her. I'm very happy for her and this Travis Kelsey relationship. And I hope that all works out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no breakup songs. Um, I did love, by the way, Kelly kept saying, she's like, yeah, get off my dick. You know, I don't know. She kept saying that about all the stoolies. Like, yeah, just get off my dick. I was like, I just, I don't know why when girls say get off my dick or suck my dick, I think it's like the funniest thing. Um, and it makes it seem so much more passionate to me, I guess maybe just cause I have one, but it just, I don't know. I loved her. Kept saying that even though like she was wrong, she just kept saying, get off my dick, whatever. I just thought that was hilarious. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give her, I'll give her the, uh, W on saying that to try to get my mind off of what she was actually talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I'm over the Swifty stuff. We've talked about it too long on here. Yeah, I'm done with it. <laughs> uh, other thing I got on radio was the text from Dante about Rico. About Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, which, obviously, if you guys did not listen to uh, Barcel Radio after Pick'em, they talked about the text did not have that part on, that Dave ad-libbed the part at the end that said, can't believe Bosco didn't show. Uh, Dante would never do that. Dante is a writer. And uh, he was definitely a little bit thrown off when Rico called him. Uh, and you could see during pick him, Rico was starting to, you know, the yeah, old the Rico was starting out. to come back out a little bit for sure. And he knew it. He knew it. And he was saying it. Uh, I love the text to Dante. Okay, pal. After he said he'd call him back or whatever. <laughs> sounds yeah, good, pal, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, sounds good, pal, <laughs> when you're yeah. palling someone, that's, that's Bosco, baby. I love it. I fucking oh, yeah. love it. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't have much on that. That clip of the phone call is really all I've seen. Uh, I, yeah. I was pretty spotty in and out of radio this week, but uh, the clip of the phone call was, you know, a great watch in its own because you, because you, I mean, I did see the clip of Dante like explaining himself on radio about it, but uh, yeah, the phone call was electric. Uh, yeah, just because sure. you, you Rico was ready to unleash the riders on Dante, you could tell he he was ready yeah. to go. He said he's just waiting for a war. So uh, he's grown though, dude. I'll tell you that right now because he was ready and they, he could he could take a little little thing and just snap it into something bigger. But he's been super even keel. So I even DM'd him on the side and was just like, dude, we love seeing you grow. I know you hate me because I do Stooly Wednesday, but you know we all love you here. So. Right. I uh, shout out Rico. Hopefully one day he'll come on this pod, even though I told him that he probably never would. And I would understand. So yeah. anything yeah, else on radio? Uh, the last thing I got was like early in the week, you had Kirk with his fake retire from the dozen uh, because of got me. You know, the rule changes. <laughs> and then he was right back in. Yeah. But if he, I feel like he's retired like three times though. And now he's, he's always yeah. back. He, the, the guy lives to compete. It seems like at this point. So, uh, and then they also had surviving Barstool talk, you know, the whole, uh, the whole list has been out, but uh, just like you can tell people are already strategizing. They're trying to talk about what to do with radio and the shows during that week. Like even uh, again, PMT mentioned it. Uh, Big Cat was like, oh, shit, we're going to be doing, you know, uh, surviving Barstool on a very good week in the NFL. So, yeah, uh, yeah that, I'm excited for that to, you know, start filming. And uh, that's just going to be all time content we, we get from uh, radio or not radio. I'm sorry for surviving Barstool. Yeah, that's going to be insane. I can't wait to see because you're getting a bunch of people from Chicago that are just jamming themselves into that New York office. That's already seems like there's spaces that are, you know, pretty jam packed. So, yep, excited, very excited. I, I feel like all the new content that's coming out has just been blowing up uh, Ryder Cup, you know, most dangerous game. So I think this is just going to do the same. All right. If we got nothing else there, let's move into the yak because there was a hell of a week with the yak this week. Um, I guess we should just start with the uh, elephant in the room. Um, I guess there's like three elephants in the room. They all have to deal with Che, though. So I guess I'll just start with the one that happened on Saturday. Yeah, Che's going Even Che taking a super L in roof ball, though. I mean, two overs or whatever it was, very low score. Um, I've already said, I reached out to my buddy. Those of you that remember the bet that was on the yak, I was the one that bet on Stephen Che, $100 if he won, $50 if anyone else won. I've already reached out to my buddy and told him I will give him $50 or Venmo him $50 whenever he wants because I am just disgusted. I am confused. I don't understand. Where is the king of ping? Where was Yao ping? He was nowhere to be found in Oregon. So I, uh, the best hey, boy I cap. paid up. He's 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 pulling a burrow and he's got a strained calf. Uh, you know, burrow <laughs> yeah, the, Rogers. The injury. You talk about yeah, he that was hurt. insane. Even though you know, KB was like, "You didn't seem injured at all." And like, yeah, Nick talking, and KB like, were like, about? "You never mentioned yeah. that once." Yeah, <laughs> that was but uh, yeah, he had the excuses but, ready to go. But of course, excuses are not what happens. The goddamn guy wins at everything because he gets the air chase. They come yeah, out, they're like, oh, these are stupid. Look at these drawings. I would never wear these. And all of a sudden, Big Cat's like, all right, those are pretty sick. Once the mock-up <laughs> comes out from the guys in graphics, and he was like, shit, I would wear those. So Stephen Che yeah. takes an L, gets a W, but then takes a bigger L, which I think you know what we're talking about here. Well, I, I don't even know if it's uh, – it, he turned that into a W, too, because he's going viral. You know, he's, yeah. he's in Jalen Hurts' head. Uh, but, yeah, Jalen Hurts has to stay healthy this week or else uh, the city, city of Philadelphia will kill Stephen Che because uh, it was it was tough for him wishing injury upon an NFL player. So uh, this could – it could have just stemmed from him taking the Ellen Roof ball and then coming to watch his team lose the next day. And he had that pent-up anger. He's ready to, ready to see the tush push or the brotherly shove, you know, come yeah. to an end uh, by all means. And, uh, you know, there's other personalities out there that are kind of feeding off that take. But Che actually believes that he's going to uh, he's going to get that rule changed because of this, uh, the noise he's he's made. Yeah, well, I mean, he definitely believes that. And any time that he goes viral or gets any sort of like uh, numbers or push on anything, he's definitely going to think that he's changing everything, which Oops. why not? Right. <laughs> Is yeah, he calling you? A, no, that was a, <laughs> I got an ESPN alert because Stephen Che just changed the, the rules yeah. of the NFL. That is, that is crazy, though, too. Adam Schefter reporting Stephen Che has been eliminated first round of roof ball tournament, too. That was just such a brutal update on my phone. I was like, ugh. No, that, I already that, saw that, it live happening, and then I get to see it from Shefty, and everyone's like, we don't give a shit. Football. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, no one gets it. That's, that just shows how good the relationship between Shefty, uh, Big Cat, and uh, Stephen, like how that is because – 
Uh, For sure. Shefty definitely loves like firing those tweets out to make fun of Steven. It's, it's, it's funny shit. That's um, yeah, that's you know, he lives for that shit just like we do when we see something that we think will be funny, we fire it out. Like, Shefty's not like a stoolie where he could just shoot something out. So, when he sees something that he can, you know, make look official, like, he definitely goes for it. And I love that he does that to Che, which, you know, Steven, you'd think, oh man, I'm taking an L on this. No, it's always a W for him because it's Schefter's talking about him, you know. Yeah, so, no one's brain looks like his, he turns every loss into a win. Uh, but I mean, moving off of Steven, I've got like it's been an off the rails week for the league yeah and i love it like it's yeah. been a great week have of the a ton year. of notes here you, you have like uh the book writing stuff and i'm fine yeah. like finding erotic novels book. yeah but the, the with doing it with the wheels was like it would made it electric i forget who brandon's of getting fucked by but that's going to be a great chapter i think kb gets to write it yep uh, it's the three-headed gobbler or three-headed you know whatever it is it's yeah. like a lion a dragon and something else that kb has a snake or something that's going to come flood brandon which is <laughs> just yeah, it's, it's so be... so perfect for the act to get kb to have all three of those things yeah they got to get quigs on the graphics and just do like, so oh, like a sure. few pictures for us uh this has to be i wouldn't even book. mind i'm not gonna lie if we just could do a read-along and have um uh shit oh man what's the guy's name that does the cartoons no more if we can get Millmore to do the cartoons while they're reading <laughs> just right, do yeah. just do visuals that would be fucking great um but yeah i had um they also mentioned earlier in the week on the act that they were possibly going to do like a pumpkin or a candy race like they might fill a pumpkin with like booze or they might fill like you know or have candy or big cat and you know them were all talking about possibly on halloween doing like a fill a pumpkin with you know something or you know eat a bunch of candy or something like that they have a thousand ideas that never come to fruition, but they're always so funny. So I figured why not mention it, even though I don't think this will ever happen. It was a great idea. You know what I mean? Right, so I figured yeah. I'd throw it out there. Um, the other thing that same day that I put on here that I thought was great is that Stu was like, yeah, Francis is a pussy. Yeah. And right, then just started just mind. ripping on Francis's parents and how they parent to him. I was like, Jesus Christ. Dude. Yeah, he said it's not their <laughs> fault. It's his parents' fault. I was like, damn, yeah. bro. Like that, that's, that's a deep cut. Like, okay. You don't talk to shit. crazy. Dude. And he's like, I love him. He's, I love the guy. And it's not his fault. It's his parents' fault. Like, what? Dude, I just, crazy. I love Stu on the act, dude. Every Wednesday, it's just such a treat to see him on there. And then when they're like, where's Sandy at? After he's just talking about like, you know, rim jobbing and blowing people and all this stuff. He's like, oh, she's right over there. You know, so shout out Sandy. Yeah. Uh, so I have one more thing on the yak. I just had the fact that spaghetti sucks compared to any other type of pasta that's similar to spaghetti. Um, oh, as an Italian, I will agree. Spaghetti is the worst of those type of noodles. Linguini is better. Angel hair is better. Uh, Bucatini is better. Um, and then I'm also very much on Big Cat's side. Penne and rigatoni and those are very good because they hold the sauce. You can also slip your fork in them, get the bunch mm -hmm. of them at once, whatever. Those are the way to go, in my opinion. Um, I'm a big know, bow tie noodle guy. Bow ties oh, are dude, good. I was just going to say farfalle, dude. Farfalle. Mm -hmm. That's bow ties, baby. I just made some for my kids this earlier today. So, yeah, I had some um, yesterday. Yeah, I always, uh, I'll always hit some bow ties with uh, the, the the bow ties with Parmesan cheese. Regardless, dude, it's just it's good shit. Yeah, but anyway, as an Italian, like I said, I can't hate on spaghetti, but I will say that I eat pretty much every other type of pasta more than spaghetti. So, gotcha. Tells you yeah, something. Uh, yeah, spaghetti's like your basic bitch of pasta. It's that's what it is. You know, right. it'll get the job done. You know, but you don't want to go to it all the time. It's just it's easy, nice, and you know, you know, she's gonna come cuddle you. You know, she'll she'll get it done for you, but it's it's not something you're gonna write home about. That's right. All right, last thing I got here is uh, anus uh, KB. He was wearing a black uncle bandana that someone gave him, gifted <laughs> him, I should say. Um, which he was like, yeah, I think I could wear this, and he's like, wait who gave this to you? And it was like, as a white dude, he's like, ah, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think I can wear this. So it was yeah, right. pretty funny. He did rock it the entire episode, which was pretty good. Um, he also got like shirts from them that said black uncle on the front. And then on the back, it said black cat dad or something like that, which was also very strange shirt. But uh, knowing KB, he'll rock that out somewhere at some point. Um, another thing that happened during anus was Nick DM'd Alex Daddario when he was out at the bar and she never DM back. So he's very distraught about that now. Yeah, um, and they're, yeah, they're trying to, uh, you know, position him in the right way to get back in with her, but she has not seen the DM. So it's all okay. good as the, at this point right now. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then the last thing I have was Brawley. You remember Brawley, the quadriplegic? Yeah. 
he fucking destroyed Mook, first of all, just destroyed him and Rudy too, and also KB and Nick. But when I tell you went in hard, when I say ham, hard as a motherfucker on Mook, just destroyed him on a on this uh they did, I guess it was just a roast of everybody there, and um they just played the audio and he absolutely destroyed him. He said something like, You say you got queens, that's just a pair in your hand. <laughs> I was like, bars, Brawly, bars. So, yeah. And then he, Brawly was just making fun of Nick's legs. And Nick's like, dude, this is a quadriplegic making fun of my legs. And then yeah. Kyle goes, two weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah, <if I> did. <laughs> All right. Last thing I think we should talk about is healthy debate, just because it's just been blowing up so much. And, you know, shout out Rico Bosco. You know, we've been talking about him a lot already. He's just, he's back to his old ways. He's, you know, getting, you know, feisty and crazy, but he's able to tame it now. Um, and you can see that, especially on healthy debate, uh, shout out jet ski, shout out freaking meek Phil in there. Dukes just being in there doing the, but yeah, what a great video that was. Got me hyped as hell this morning. It was like seven in the morning. I'm sitting there DM and Rico, like, let's fucking go Rico 15 K baby. Um, so, and he's still getting big cat, Dave, you know, all the big guys calling in, which, you know, the yak yeah. been waiting for Dave to come in all, you know, every month he's supposed to have an appearance and he doesn't come in. So the fact that Rico's getting Dave on his show nonstop, it's a testament to show you what, what the show has become, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, he, he had all, all the stars on this week. He had Frank, the tank on talking yep. a little, uh, he had Kelly in there talking some Swifty stuff. Will Compton's been on a couple of times, but yeah, that showing with Dave, when Dave is yelling unsubscribe, unsubscribe, we should keep this going for 13 hours. And then, you know, you got 21 simps, 21, 21 simps. simps. Yeah. 21 yeah. simps. 21 yeah. simps. It's, it's God, just dude, he instant content. I love it. To just roll I with the way he it. did was awesome, and he got the 15k easy. Uh, I think they're up over like 18,000 now. So he's he's still he's still growing off that clip, and uh, it was oh, a hell, yeah. of a hell of a way to end the healthy debate. I definitely think that he won that debate. Healthy debate. It's the best show out right now. Best new show out right now. Healthy debate. I mean, yeah, it could be debated. Healthy debate. Mostly sports is pretty good too. Healthy debate. <laughs> healthy debate. Brandon Walker not as good as Rico. Healthy debate. I mean, that's 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 an opinion. That's healthy debate. But that's an opinion. Healthy debate. All right, Frank. I'm just going to run through my list here. The Sandman shoutouts. Uh, I had mostly sports, of course. Like I said, it's my. I I really think it's my new favorite show. You know, they had a little Swifty talk. Uh, they they were, they were cracking me up when Mark Titus kept saying, uh, "Lou Holtz is a, a Lou Holtz, you asshole." Like they, it, it's just a, their dynamic going back and forth is great. Another electric Tommy Walker minute. Uh, Tonight, you know, Friday night is when we're recording. I guess it'll be over by then. But, you know, shout out to TJ. I'm sure he's going to get them up to – he's going to get 5K new subs. He's doing a live stream for them. Um, yep. I have we'll the be dozen. There. Yeah, I have the 1v1 dozen. Uh, you know, they had the change and everything. But really, um, just to recap it, KB wins it all, of course, because it it's a tournament built for his skill set. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, he goes on to win. Uh, he didn't miss in the final. Uh, he kind of dominated that one. Like, it was over before, like, the last four quick categories. And Jeff uh, Jeff Gulow even ran through the rest, and he would have gone perfect anyway. So it wouldn't have mattered if Fran got them all right because KB wasn't missing. He was on his game. And he even added four new categories, Bachelor and Bachelorette stuff, and just read that a was Wikipedia page and memorized just to, it all. Just to fucking slap it in her face, I feel like. That was crazy. Right, yeah, that's that's nuts. Well, he said he was, oh. pre he was preparing for Frank at first, and he was trying to do, like, Matt's playoff losses and stuff at first. Dog walk, snake draft with Nick and Kate on common embarrassments. Uh, there was a clip that went re-viral of a previous viral clip of Nick kind of roasting White Sox Dave for the whole White Sox Dylan thing. Uh, it still makes me laugh every time, but it's an awesome draft. If you don't watch the dog walk, you should. Uh, PMT is also running. They're not doing, like, a subathon or anything, but we got to get – pmt up to five hundred thousand su subs on youtube so we can get max uh 5k video um pick them you got the dog is back rico was going you know back and forth with dave about yeah. pizza fest and all that it's it just just solid solid episode of pick them uh but yeah that's all i got for my salmon shout outs all right well let's just move right into the barstool beast of the week I'll go ahead and take the lead here. Uh, go for it. It went easy, easy beast for me. It was a, it was HQ Spider. It was, it was the man, Dan. Uh, he, he 
crush it in most dangerous game. The guy works his ass off on all these productions and all that stuff. He even made that a, a point like in his speech, uh, just saying he's like, Hey, like I've been, I've been out here grinding for five years. You know, it's finally good to see him get the recognition and notoriety he deserves. Cause uh, he's a hell of a dude. And you could tell like, he's, everyone in the office loves him, you know, uh, never a bad word said about the guy, but the way he played most dangerous game and, uh, you know, got the dub. He's a well-deserved barstool beast this week. Absolutely. I got absolutely no qualms with that at all. Could have been my beast as well. Um, I specifically didn't make him my beast because I thought you were going to make him the beast. I didn't want to do a unanimous because I did have another set of people actually that I thought, but I will say right now, Spider deserved a dub more than anybody after all the shit that he's done for Barstool and for the Stoolies and for just anybody in general. You remember the interview we did with Tim Hitchings? He said that Spider was right there saying, do you guys need anything? Can I help you with anything? The guy, you know, and that's just for TJ's parents. You know what I mean? The guy is there for anybody, and he's just such a good dude that he just deserves a dub, and I'm glad that he got the Beast of the Week, and I'm glad he won Most Dangerous Game. So my Beast, it's the entire Healthy Debate team. Uh, I put Rico, Jetski, Dukes, and then even Meek Phil. I put him in there just because that show is just blowing up. The whole show is blowing up. I don't think that show is the show that it is without Jetski, without Dukes, without even Meek Phil being in there. Rico is obviously the star. We all know that. He's the one that makes the show. But those guys in the booth, if you don't get hype with them and if the little mistakes and the little glitches that happen, that stuff's awesome. Like, that's not like, you know, when TJ's in the booth and something like that happens, everyone's like, what the fuck, TJ? The mouth's not, you know, syncing up, whatever. These guys, we just love it. We laugh about it. The one time they just lost Rico in the middle of the show, Jetski did the sign off instead. Um, you know, when Rico was screaming, Jetski ran back in, plugged the microphone in, ran back to the room. And by the time he got back, they already had 15K subs. So he jumped in. He's like, oh, shit. And it started celebrating. Like, it was just all time stuff. That team, that team camaraderie that they already have in that healthy debate team is amazing. Over 15,000 subs, over 20K views on every single episode so far. Um, it's just a fun show. So, shout yeah, out to awesome. Three, just having. Guys having fan interaction with the show like that with a cast like that because dukes would give it to you jet ski will yell at you like yeah that that whole gang that they got in there it's a you know it it, it was a perfectly casted show and uh it uh rico's only going upwards he, he's gonna big be a big superstar here soon you know that he it's his words not mine so it, uh that that whole uh that whole cast and that whole show has been phenomenal so far all right let's move right into the barstool least of the week now yeah it was tough um, <laughs> I can't hold back, so I'm just going to go. It's fucking Francis. I gave him the fucking pass last week, dude. What the fuck, dude? I gave him the pass last week, and he just, it just did exactly the opposite of what I would have wanted. I mean, I said last week he took a couple L's, but he also was, you know, he was also a good team player and da-da-da, whatever. Dude, he just made me look like a fucking idiot. He took the double L's in the Ryder Cup, didn't even want to do the, to the the coin toss. You know, he was just like, no, just let Trent play. Like, you're not even going to try, dude? Like, I don't. I just felt like it was L's all around. He was voted off the most dangerous game with the ridiculous speech that we talked about with Rudy. Um, you know, first of all, says it was all fake and that, you know, oh, you know, why everyone needs to just realize, like, it was fake and it was for the show and whatever, but then he wants Spider to keep his word. He Spider couldn't just be faking that shit. Like, it, the whole thing was just so annoying. And then the the one thing I wrote here that I think it just pissed off more stoolies than just me, but in general, I saw it in the comments and stuff. The fact that he was like, how poor do you have to be to not be able to afford $250 skydiving, you know, thing, whatever. It's like, dude, you went to the middle of fucking Colorado and skydove in this random place that obviously is like, it would not cost $250. You got to fly to Colorado. Then you got to go to this place. Then you got to buy the thing. Then you got to fly back home. Like, I don't know. I just felt like it was very like hoity toity and kind of douchebaggery. The fact that he was just like, how poor do you have to be? And whatever. Like, right. I, I don't care about all that shit. I think it's funny when he plays that card, the smart and, and rich card. Cause it, he should, they just play with you got, you know, with your hand, you're dealt. But to be like, going at the stoolies for saying shit like that because his name was already in the system. That's fucking hilarious. Just be like, yeah, dude, I'm a rich asshole that got to do that. You know, it's funny. Like not call out stoolies for being poor. Cause we can't go skydiving in some remote place in Colorado. I don't know. Sorry. I'm done. You can go, but well, no, I mean, Francis clearly you're very upset. Yeah. I mean, it's unanimously. So it's Francis. Uh, oh, good. You know, <laughs> his speech on, but I mean, I can't really add much to that monologue. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, you know, his speech on most dangerous we've, we've gone over the golf thing and then not being top three on his golf thing when uh, he was the second pick overall. 
Uh, yep. It's a tough look. Uh, you know, you got to contribute better. But yeah, it's been a been a very down week for you, boy. And uh, yeah, I, we'll just leave it on your monologue. We're good. All right. Well, that'll lead us right into the barstool beef of the week. Fuck you. Well, fuck you too. Oh my God. What? Right. So uh, my beef of the week comes straight from your beast. Uh, it's Dave versus Rico. They had a great back and forth this week uh, with, you know, Dave getting on him about not going to Pizza Fest. And we saw what came out of that, a ton of content out of that. And then you had Dave calling in to Healthy Debate to try to get people unsubscribed. And, you know, Rico with the 21 simps, that's, you know, it, it, probably my favorite video this week. Uh, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it, that clip is amazing. And uh, yeah, Rico versus Dave. It's just it's a tale all this time that uh, they're going to be beefing all the time. And uh, it's about time that we got them here on the Barstool Beef of the Week because uh you know that that back and forth is just a legendary one that you know the stoolies love to see and uh, yeah. dave, dave will never quit quit it either it's one year contracts for life so you know dave's going to be on his ass all the time yeah no doubt that's a great beef that could have been the barstool beef of the week for you know 20 weeks in a row cause, you know certain years in the past so it's nice to have it back up uh but also nice to have it where it's not just Dave just shitting on Rico though. Rico actually coming back and actually, in my opinion, getting the dub because he got this the subscribers. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I forget what he was when he was yelling when the mic was off. He was like, I'm the fucking man, I'm the fucking king, <laughs> or whatever he said. I was just dying because you could just hear it through the wall. Yeah. Um, but my beef just goes along with almost the entire goddamn show. It was just Francis versus Rudy, um, or just Francis versus his own mental state of mind. Um Again, I'm not going to keep going on and about it, but the ridiculous speech, um, the fact that he really just called out Rudy as a man in general. Um, but I just love, and I got to give Rudy his shout out because he said, Rudy said, uh, if I beat you in a game of checkers, I wouldn't write a manifesto about it, which yeah, was so one of the funniest lines ever. Um, he's like, this is a game. Like, finally, after that, it was like, all right, like, you lose. So um, that was my beef, although we touched on it way too much already. Yeah, again, we don't have to keep beating the dead horse, but yeah, it's a great beef. Like I said, with Rudy laughing in his face as he gives the speech, uh, made it all that much better. It's a uh, you know all time beef, and uh, Francis is due for a major comeback because it's been a rough week of Francis this, uh, this week. And let's move right into the comment of the week. Vacation mode. <laughs> I'm flying a right now. Let's go. I'll let you end this one because my comment is more of just kind of like a funny thing. It was more like a personal, especially for the podcast in general. There was a bunch of comments that I thought were funny and that were good this week. Um, but shout out to Baja Boho Ranchi. Uh, Joe Boo's Rum is the name. He just commented on our picture of the, I think it was day two of posting Connor Mook until he comes on the pod. And he just commented, do the right thing, you red fuck. <laughs> um, which I just found that absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, that was a good one. You know, the Mook's, Mook's our guy, so we're not going to say he's a red fuck, but to see someone comment that yeah. um, made me feel good because they want to see Mook on the pod. You know what I mean? So Yeah, healthy debate. He's, get your ass he's, on he's, here. he's not a red fuck, but, uh, you know, some people healthy debate might think he's a red fuck that should do the right thing. So, uh, again, healthy debate. I, I'm not saying that healthy debate that he might be a red fuck if he doesn't do the right thing, healthy debate. That's right. Shout out Joe Boo's rum. Yeah, Baja shout out Boho Joe Boo's. We appreciate you, uh, you know, following along and trying trying to get Mook to do the right thing. Uh, I'll right. roll into my comment. Uh, it's, you know, uh, someone that the you know that we talked about in the very first comment of the week. It's uh, FSU Brando had another banger of a tweet this week. Uh, Big Never Cat stops. Big Cat doesn't understand the Kevin James like shrugging meme. Uh, so we went ahead and quoted it and said, stop it. I still don't understand this meme. And FSU Brando uh said you know stop it i still don't understand this meme uh in all caps with a reply of a photoshop big cat on top of kevin james shoulders it's just very fucking funny <laughs> Nine, 960 likes uh not yet yeah, 960 likes nine retweets uh five bookmarks is another banger from brando uh it's just a very funny fucking picture you know it'll be up uh be up right here next to us uh you know a hell of a comment good job brando i mean those photoshop skills are coming in clutch nowadays I was gonna so say, it's, it's like solid. we talk about it every week it could just be the fsu brando comment of the week at this right. section honestly 
Thank you guys as always for sticking around with the breakdown this long. We appreciate you guys. We hope you enjoyed the, our segments of the breakdown this week. Now let's roll into another fantastic interview that with someone that we've been fortunate enough to meet in person and really a friend of the show and a friend of the pod, uh, a friend of ours, Chris Castellani. Uh, we dive a little into his you know career, his time at Barstool, what got him into Barstool, the relationships he's made at the company, and uh, what to expect going forward. And now, Chris Castellani. All right, we're here with one of the hosts of Stool Baseball, You've also seen him in the dozen, and you've also seen him on Lights, Camera, Barstool. Chris Castellani, how we doing, brother? Really appreciate you guys having me, man. It's great to see you guys again. And, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I've been following along. And this is this is a cool thing you guys do, man. I, I think, like, it's so weird that one of the more – beyond Barstool, the behind Barstool stuff is, like, every bit as fascinating. So uh, happy to be here, happy to see you guys again. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We we were fortunate enough to meet down in the, down in Chicago or up in Chicago, whichever way you're coming from. For Frankie coming from Florida, yeah. you coming from you know, that uh, the that evil state up north. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it's always a pleasure to be talking to you, Chris. Uh, also a resident of Stooley Wednesday, so we appreciate you always popping in there to you know chop it up with the boys. Uh, but uh, I, I mean I'm sure you're familiar with how I usually try to get things rolling. Um, you know what. What got you into bar? So I looked at your LinkedIn a little bit. I saw that you've always kind of been like uh, into like the media personality stuff. So like, what was your path into getting into Barstool? And like, were you a fan before you were hired? Like all of that. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a unique thing, man, because I, it was, it was college. It was when I was in college, probably my last, you know, I, I didn't graduate, but I, I was there for three, four years. And, and so probably my last two years, my roommate, you know, had, had a Barstool flag. Uh, in our apartment. And it was always an interesting thing because I knew I wanted to talk about sports, but I, and I was willing to put up with it, but I always hated the sanitization of sports talk. Like I didn't, I like the regulated, like, you know, kind of got a color between the lines, like generic sports talk stuff. And that stuff can really work, obviously. And I don't want to knock people who do it, but it's like, I had these, these videos that I was doing these tiger videos that were, you know, they were passionate, they were profane. I, I at least tried to make them, you know, somewhat informative. And, and then I really, my first introduction was to, I, you know, my buddy was a huge part of my take fan. Ultimately, like the personality I gravitated to right away was always Dave, um, which is like that, that's so like, which made it more unique that like I was, I guess, technically a Dave hire, right? You know, Dave was the one who reached out to me, right. you know, after the, the Turnbull no hitter. So I just, I found, you know, Dave as a personality to be kind of, I think what a lot of content creators want to be, which is that he's dipping his toes into a million different ponds and yeah, it's sports, it's pizza, it's pop culture. And it's just like, I don't really care what the topic is. I'm just interested in kind of hearing this guy speak. And then, you know, it with each passing month, year, the company really, really grew obviously. And, and for a brief minute, man, cause I was like, in college, you know, you're always really idealistic and it's like, man, I want to work here. Like this seems like the greatest place to work. And then, you know, you get to, uh, you get to a point where, you know, at least my personal situation where it's like, okay, pump, pumping out the videos, I dropped out of college, like I'm in the gas station. And it's like for a minute, like the dream kind of died. And I, not to say I like got away from bar stool, but it was just one of those things where it's like, I don't really, you know, I, I don't really see like, it's a, it's a pipe dream. Like it's, it's a fantasy thing. And then obviously, you know, the stars, aligned but I think really around college was when I got into it and I think one of the coolest things about the way the company's grown and the way that things have changed is the fact that as someone like me has grown so has Barstool you know like the company has evolved to a point where yeah somebody who is you know 20 years old in college can enjoy it every bit as much as you know me now a 28 year old who's you know I obviously several years removed from all that uh, so I mean, that was, that was kind of the big, you know, foray was, was, you know, my buddy kind of showing me some clips and, and ultimately like, there's always going to be frustrations, but the one thing that I always enjoyed about Barstool's content is that like, it never ceased being fun. I think one thing that people really get away from when it comes to sports content is like, just, you know, it's constant, you know, it doesn't need to be as serious as you make it out to be. And, and of course, like you're going to have heartbreak, you're going to have frustrations, but the number one word that always came to mind is like, this just seems cool. Like Barstool, I associate it with being cool. And so that was kind of what got me attached originally. Yeah. Now you mentioned, you mentioned the no hitter. So uh, I was asking, and Frankie and I were talking prior, but uh, he mentioned that video. So I'm not, I'm not familiar actually with your hiring story. What was yeah. that? 
Okay, so you know it's so funny, man. I it's I, I could live to be a thousand. I'll never get tired of telling the story. Like it's <laughs> it, it was the day, the moment, like where that defined my life. So basically, what had happened, and I've told this part of it before, but not really in full. I think I told it on Friday Night Pints, like a few year or a few months after I got hired. So. I was, I'd been doing the tiger videos and it was one of those weird things where for a few months there, I felt like the wheels, the gears were really turning. I felt better about my content and just, you know, it was, it was, I was in a better place, you know, than I had been. And, and I, I got an offer, you know, a, a, not a whole lot of money, but an offer from a, another media company. I wouldn't call it a competitor at Barstool, but you know, it was, it was just kind of a foot in, in the door gig. And at the time I'm like, this is a big deal. Cause you know, I don't, I don't want to live here anymore. And I, I want to, you know, get out of the gas station and do shit. And then, so I was like about to sign that contract. And then, uh, Tigers are playing on the West coast, uh, in Seattle, Turnbull throws a no hitter. And, um, so I put out the video, uh, it's, I put out the reaction video and I put out the post game video that I do every single night. And I started, you know, I wake up the next morning. It was a, it was a 8, 8 AM shift at the gas station. I lived really close. So I got up at like seven 40, but it was a West coast game and I had a podcast to do. So I got to bed at like two. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sleeping super well. I wake up and Dave's Dave's in the DMS and he's basically like, do you want to cover Michigan for us now? Initially, and I still, this is, you know, it's just funny that Dave for the longest time was against the blue check mark because it wasn't a verified Twitter account. I'm like, okay, this is some hack. This is some guy just like trying to fuck with me. And then you check and it's like multi multi millions of followers. And it's like, holy shit. Right. So I'm, I'm at the, I'm at the gas station right now and I'm texting, uh, you know, I'm texting my friends being like, dude, fucking important. I just reached out. You're not gonna believe this. So, um, it was, I, I don't remember the exact time, but I, Dave asked for my number. And then, you know, I'm, I'm giving somebody her, her coffee order. Right. And, and uh, I get a call from, a, a from an area code that I figured was probably, you know, Dave, uh, I answer it and it's Dave talking to me. And I like, in the, you just kind of start chuckling. Like it's just, it was just a weird thing that was going on. And so I'm like, I'm outside. It was a nice day. It was, it was, you know, uh, mid to late May. And, and I was just pacing back and forth outside in like jeans and like gray speedway, you know, work shirt. And yeah, I can um, only imagine got to be super surreal at that moment. It's of like, course. Well, yeah. surreal. What's surreal is like you have regulars at a gas station. It's like a restaurant. Like there's people Crazy. coming in like, you, yeah. I, I learned way more about strangers working at a gas station. Than I ever have like people open up to you in bizarre ways. So like the regulars are walking by, they know you by your first name at this point. And I'm like, dude, none, none of these motherfuckers know I'm talking to Dave Portnoy right now. And so <laughs> I come back in. And you know, I thought I was going to have to fight for it, but Dave was like, "Look, we like you. We think you're, we think you're good. We're going to hire you." And so I walk back in, and I'm like, "Barstool just offered me." And this is always, this is always the part that's just like, you know, you know, you, when you're hot, you're hot. So I'm texting with my family, and they're like, "I right, don't tell anybody. Like, keep it on the down low. Like, you know, may, don't do anything until it's signed." Uh, and I was going to stay true to that. And I shit you not, the next person who walks into Speedway is wearing a Barstool hoodie, and. Um, <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm like, hey, you, <laughs> no you're a big Barstool fan? He goes, yeah. And I'm like, you're not going to believe who they're about to hire. And I think, <laughs> That's I sick. think he yeah. thought I was joking. I think he thought I was joking or like was like part-time thing. I would have. I definitely would have. Yeah, it's like of this course, fucking no. cashier to gas right? station That's working crazy. for Barstool. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I get home. I put the – it's signed. Everything's set. I put the video out there. You know, I'm crying. My family's crying. And a few hours later, that same guy DM me on Instagram. It was like, dude, I thought you were fucking joking. <laughs> and, um, That's great. So I was, uh, it, it was, yeah, man. And, and it took, it took a while for the whole thing to sink in. I mean, I would argue it was really months before I got my sea legs under me, but I, I would say it was a solid week before the realization of like, yeah, things have changed. Like you're, you're putting names into your contacts right. and your phone that you never expected. Uh, and it kicked off, you know, a, a two year, you know, journey that has been topsy turvy as fuck. But it's like every time I tell that story and every time I think back to like where I was in life then compared to where things are now, like it's crazy. And, and I think it it speaks to it's why, like, you know, I'm, I, I try to be a loyal guy. Like I will be like I will be a Dave fan, like as long as I live, because it's like I think one thing 
that we do a great job of here is that like we recognize talent and, and and I think that there's a lot of companies out there that would would keep an eye on the resume. You know, where's your degree from? You know, did you go to journalism school? Did you go to broadcasting school? Did you graduate from broadcasting school? And he's just like, there's this fucking weird guy on the internet who does these tiger videos for this team that sucks, but he's like so passionate about it. Like that. Um, yeah. Everything, everything turned upside down when that happened. It was obviously, you know, really humbling. I mean, it's got to be. Yeah, it sounds like another story. guy at the company that does videos for a terrible baseball team. <laughs> right. <imagine. laughs> There's so, there were similarities right away <laughs> that, that people <laughs> notice of. Yeah. You were talking about just Chicago in general, and I know that we had spoke about it when we were in Chicago. Like, you're remote now. I know you had said at one point you were like, yeah, I wanted to go to Chicago, and maybe – would you go to New York if they asked you to go to New York? Or are you just, like, set on Chicago? Or are you trying to get out anywhere? Or what's your, like, feeling now? I don't think I could do New York. And it's not it's not the people, obviously. You know, I love, I love being around the people there. Oh, I get I, it. I, I think New York just as a whole, as a city, you know, as somebody with a lot of anxiety – I just don't think it would particularly work. I mean, when I'm there, because I, when I go, I'm for barstool stuff. I'm there for like two days at a time, maybe three right. tops with a dozen. And like your mental clock, like is just exists in a different time zone, you know, than it yeah. does when uh when you're in in Michigan. You know, obviously, I have a lot of connections in Chicago. I know a lot of people uh, in Chicago. My brother lives there. I mean, you know, we we hung out there obviously when uh, you were there for the yeah, dozen. Yeah. So I mean, I don't. Uh, none of that stuff has really been discussed. Um, yeah, I mean it's it, it's tough, you know. I'm working through it, but yeah, I, the, the discussions will be had, you know, at some point, you know, I, I at least I hope so in, in the future, because I, I think, you know, what I really want right now, because it's it's hard when you're kind of going through it to be like, what's your what's your niche here? Like, how do you carve out something the way that you know other people at the company do? You know, like like I love Jeff, right? Like Jeff is the dozen guy. Like he's made it with the dozen. That's a big like money producing thing for for the company. And so with me, it's like I think the best course of action for me right now. And I, I set like these deadlines that are sometimes, you know, off, but like, I want to get to a year, December 6th, I'll be a year sober, you know? And, and at that point, you know, I think uh, I, hopefully I'll be able to prove I'm in, you know, I'm in a much better place and, and, you know, working through it. I, I think, well, the one thing I'm kind of proud of over the last several months is that like, I think I'm better at my job, at least in terms of blogging than I've been like ever. I, I mean, what's, it really is true. Your blogs man. have been great, dude. I will say that. Sorry Thank to cut you, you yeah, off, but I they've mean, been great. Well, the thing is, man, it's like when you get clean, it like it takes time, but like you're the, the there's doors of your brain that just open up. And like there was a period of time where it's like you writing like five blogs in a week was like tough for me. And now it's just like I can, you know, you get the kick in the ass you need and you can just start pumping it out. Cause I think everyone that gets hired here that gets hired in the way I did where it was kind of, you know, stars aligned type of thing. You know um, I think there's always that period of just kind of shock and awe where you're like, I can't believe I'm here. Like, uh, and those are the ones who get hired. The ones who stick are the ones who are like, you know, okay, well I got to grind and pump out blogs and work on podcasts. It's like, you know, and I want to, I want to earn that back. Like I don't, you know, I want to be somebody who's like a huge part of this. You know, I really do love this company and I, and I, I feel like I owe a lot to the people here. Um, you know, it's, it's a weird time, you know, with, with a lot of things that have happened and, and, you know, as being as public as I was, but it's like, yeah, I mean, it, just to kind of bring things around, like I, I feel like in terms of me being here in, in Michigan, you know, I love Detroit teams and I love Michigan teams, but it's like, I, um, yeah, I, I, I would, I, I would like to expand at some point uh, and I, and I hope yeah, I can you're get ready to get out. Yeah, but I, you know, I gotta, I gotta work harder and just, you know, be in a better place and, and, you know, w when the time comes, I'll, I'll be ready for it. But uh, I, for the time being, you just gotta keep your head down. Yeah. Do you know, well, you don't forget too, dude, that new office is coming, and I think things will change when that happens too. Right now, they're slammed in that office in Chicago, and they've even mm -hmm. talked about how it's insane there. So, you know, things for will sure. be coming soon. I think, and you know, you just keep grinding out like you do, and I think you'll be just fine. For sure, man, and and I really appreciate that. And honestly, like it's. It's not, I want to make sure people like don't get it twisted. Like it's not a like I'm not it's not a bitterness thing. Like I think it's so cool what's going on at the company. I think it's so awesome that we're having this like I I you know I read the comments and stuff like I think the New York office is actually gonna like kick it into high gear. Like I really do think some really cool things are gonna come from that. Like 
I think like it's with Kevin kind of in charge of that and you still have Roan and like you got Barstool Radio killing it there. Like I, I, I love what I'm seeing coming out of the New York office and I think it's going to be so cool, the content we're going to get from Chicago. And of course, like I think if you care at all, you want to be a part of that, right? You want to be a, a, a bigger deal, but it's like, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta work your way through it. You gotta, you gotta earn that trust and just, you know, uh, and get right. So, I mean, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how things are going to grow with the company. So you mentioned, you mentioned like how Jeff kind of carved out a niche there. Mm-hmm. Are there like ideas that you've had maybe like on like, you know, on, you know, maybe just things to try out or is it, uh, kind of, you know, keep going hard at what you're doing and keep writing blogs and, uh, you know, promote yourself in that direction. Well, I, I think, and it's, it's weird. Cause I finally just like, it take it. I don't know why I'm like this. It just takes me a while to like comprehend information. And finally, what I realized after a year and a half of working here is like, the first thing you need to do is get your ass on the blog line. Like that's the number because no matter what, even if you don't have a big revenue producing podcast, even if you aren't some like top tier personality, even if you aren't like an elite great writer like Francis or one of these guys, like if you are putting your name out there and writing about the things that you want to write about, uh, that's a start. You know, like my my average page views like kind of stink, but I'm going to keep pumping out the blogs because the more you pump out there, like the more you're going to put your name out. And ultimately the really cool thing about this company is they give you so much creative freedom. Now, of course, like you can't just throw anything out there. That's why you have like a checks and balances system with editors and stuff like that. But for the most part, like if yeah, I got that's a- why, uh, that's why Nate's adding punchlines and all that stuff. <laughs> well, he's never, he's never <laughs> done that to me. Nate's always been good to me, but it's like, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you, it, with me, it's like I see something on a, on a, in a baseball game I want to write about. You put it out there, you know. Like it, th- that's uh, really important. After that, you know, I've always had ideas for stuff. You know, I, I one thing I, I like what we're doing with the baseball stuff. I really do, and, and I think that we, Carl and I have have developed something good. I love Clemmer. I love Hubs. Like I think that our back and forth there is is working. You know, it takes time to 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 get this stuff off the ground. And it takes time when you know we're doing a lot of shows on zoom or, or Riverside, you know what I mean? Like that, that chemistry kind of, it's tougher to come by, but I think we've really done something good there. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a weird thing. Cause I mean, I think I've kind of worn it on my sleeve. I struggle so much in terms of like confidence and just belief in myself. I, one thing I would like to do more of, and, and it's something that is not difficult, but I think you're at a disadvantage doing it from, you know, the basement is I, I like interviews. I like talking to people. Um, whether it's about sports, life, mental health stuff, what have you, I'd like to do more of that. Um, you know, I remember back on my, my YouTube page back in the day, I did a few that I thought worked out. Well, I mean, I interviewed Turnbull, you know, shortly after, um, shortly after, you know, I got hired and he threw a no hitter, but yeah, it's, it's a unique thing. And it's why like this, it's a, it's an amazing job to have, but you need to have legitimate belief in yourself to pitch ideas. Cause like on paper, like the idea of, I want to do this huge company-wide trivia competition that's like kind of like this big soap opera type of thing where there's like characters and heroes and villains like on paper i could see somebody listening to that being like dude that is out there but the way that jeff has presented it as well as the guys who write the questions and what gooch does and the graphics like it's become this huge thing at the company so I, i hope I hope one day like something clicks like i don't my biggest issue i don't think is is ability it's you know self-sabotage but um yeah i mean i i hope i hope i can come across some but for the time being like as long as i keep writing and 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 just you know hope for the best and uh and be good and 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 hopefully hopefully good things will come yeah i mean i yeah i like you said you hit the blogging line hard and uh, i think like doing stuff like that will you know not it will inspire more creativity and like more ideas and like uh more things to write about just doing it so I think you're on the right path, but you bring up the dozen. Uh, the one v one tournament was fun. Your run wasn't very uh, very yeah. long in that one. Uh, but yeah, you but got, it's team. Is it Flux? Right, you're on Team Flux coming. Yeah, up? Yeah, we're, we're running it back with. Uh, you know, obviously, it was funny because the the most random series of circumstances ever happened with Mincy, right? So like he leaves, we got to find a new team. Mincy comes back. Um, but I like the team we have. I like me. Uh, Carl and, uh, and, and Joey, I you know, really honestly, like Joey was, was a great addition for like helped us uh, get to the, yeah. get to the tournament. Uh, he's hilarious. Like the fans love him, uh, yeah. which I think we're, we're going to need, we're going to need, going to need some help with um, in, in that department. So I appreciate that. You know, it's so weird, man. Cause like I, 
One thing, and I think the Tigers being crap, like, is a big reason for this. Uh, one thing that has not been tapped into quite yet in my time at this company is that I'm super, super, like, to an unhealthy level competitive. Like, I've only been on one gambling stream, and it was when Michigan played Georgia, and they got their shit pumped. Like, <laughs> if you – if there were streams of me watching games, like, if – I don't care if it's, like, my team playing a college football game – if I'm playing fucking Monopoly, if I'm doing the dozen, like I do not like losing at all. Like there was, I saw some comments after I lost to Titus in the the one on one tournament of people being like, "Dude, Castellani's like disgusted." I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I don't yeah, like losing. Yeah. I, I don't. I just it, it's something no, that wears on me." And I think with the with the trivia stuff too, it's this weird like it's become this weird personal thing that people run with, and I get it. I don't know. It's like. It's that slumdog millionaire shit where all this useless information that for the first 27 years of my life was useless is all of a sudden like, oh, well, like I know that. I know that. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I I hope at some point in the near future we can like tap more into that like super competitive uh, spirit that I have while also having fun. I mean, the dozen is – like you guys were there for the the final four last year. Like that was like a college football game. Like it legitimately – like Kirk coming out and getting booed, people throwing middle fingers and F-bombs like, you know. Uh, I was crowd. watching the videos back when Rico called his friend on the phone. Yeah. It was probably yeah. louder than some college football games. It was <laughs> so loud. My phone was like just screeching. It was crazy. In, in hindsight, that was the most impressive moment of that entire like <laughs> yeah. final four because that place was going nuts. And I legitimately thought, I think he did it twice too. I legitimately yeah. thought he's going to have to hang up the fucking phone. Like there's, <laughs> they're going so insane. Um, yeah, I have so such a good, I have such a good video of like after Rico like says the answer, he comes and says "fuck you" like right. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 It's it's honestly outside of Tiger baseball, which has always been my built-in niche. It's the number one thing at the at the company that people ask me about is is the dozen. Like the people take it super seriously. I think the the universe that Jeff has created, like it's it's second to none. I mean, I know people that don't even like barstool that watch the dozen. So I mean, I really hope that our you know we're in the playing tournament. I hope our team can find a way in uh, and because uh, I, I want to keep playing. I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. the camaraderie that comes with it. So, yeah. I think you guys would be yeah, a fun team to see I thought, too. I thought you were just about to answer one of my questions here because you said the number one thing. I was going to ask, what's your number one thing or your favorite thing to do at the company right now? Like what you're doing, is it the dozen? Is it lights, camera? Is it baseball? Like I, I do because I feel like all three of those things you're very passionate about. You know, it's, it's, I, I, it's more of a sentimental answer, but it's not even one particular thing. It's being around the people is, is that like in Boston, I, I remember feeling that way. And look, I mean, people tr- like, I, I maybe get myself into trouble with this with like, you know, being so open about it, but like, I don't, I'm, we're aware of the goings on at the company. And, and when I was in Boston in the back of my head, I'm like, you know, when's the next time I'm going to see these people? And, and it's just, it's those little things that, you know, as somebody who's works remote, who spends, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't get out much, especially, you know, since, since I got clean and it's like, I just, I know that as a company for the drama purposes, we shit talk, we go back and forth and I'm not going to act like every single person here is, you know, in love with me or what I do or my content, but as a whole, like seeing these people, and the way that they've supported me and just being able to just like shoot the shit, talk sports, you know, uh, having them make me laugh. Like that's, that's the part of the job that like, I wouldn't trade for anything, like just being around them and, and being able that. to experience that. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't get old. And really being in Boston was like a perfect, like encapsulation of that because you realize like this collection of people ranging from, Kirk Minahan to Frank the Tank to Roan to Nick and KB, like this group of people, it can't, you can't duplicate Barstool, like ever. You could, you could roll the dice a million different ways, and it's never going to land on this group of people coming together ever again. And there was something like so emo, there was like really emotional about that to me when that ceremony ended. I mean, like, I know R- Riggs and like Dan and, those guys like got got shit on a little bit for tearing up, but like no, well Riggs got his shit because he cried for getting an award for crying. Like fair, that was fair, but like, <laughs> but I, I got it though. I got it. But for one, those guys have been here forever, and to see the company be yeah. where it's at is is pretty incredible. And two, it, it's like you know you realize through all like the 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 nasty ugly parts. I mean, like 
I was as open as a person could be with some of the things he was going through. And it's like, even on those days where you may be mad at this person or you're frustrated with what this person said about you, it's like, I would do it all over again to get back here. So like, just, even if it's not just one thing, like a 40 minute podcast is like, at least I got to be around the people today. And that's, that, that's the part that always like, like gets to me the most, like, regardless of the future, like I'm always going to support the company because I, I appreciate the way that the people have treated me. Yeah, it's definitely the. Yeah, I, I would mean, call that a cop out answer, but that's like an awesome answer, honestly, because meeting right. the people there, I felt the exact same way. I was like, oh my God, like these guys are fucking awesome. Like this isn't mm -hmm. just like a celebrity who you're just like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Bye. Like we hung out with Roan and with PFT and with yeah. Rico and Max and all these guys. Like it was just so cool. They just were just so like, open and awesome so i mean just to actually work with them and to know them more i can't imagine how amazing they kinda... it's, honestly when i got hired that was what i was most scared of it's like i love i love the fact that i have this job i love the fact that i have like financial security for once in my life and you know people are proud of me and it's like and then all of a sudden you know i'm like well what if what if they don't like me like what if what, what if i did you know and and i remember like the first time i went to hq and it's like, you know, I was there, like Jeff was there, like religiously watching the Olympics. And like, I was just like talking to Clem and those guys. And it's just like, you realize right away, like this is, it's a weird thing. Cause it's like being inside of a sitcom, you know, it's like you watch this TV show for years and all of a sudden you're a character on the show. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after, shortly after you realize like, there's just, there's a normalcy to this, you know, and especially with the way that the way that I haven't made things easy on myself, normalcy is like a gift. Like that's something that's like irreplaceable. And so just to have that stability, even if it's just for a few days at a time visiting New York or Chicago, like you wouldn't trade it. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get it. You, it kind of reaches back to that point of like why you got into Barstool and like a guy like me who got into Barstool because of PMT. It's more of those like regular guys giving off some like, you know, wild, let wild takes, but like, I don't you kind of relate more with that than you do like a Stephen A talking about cow, cowboys all day. Uh, but th that kind of leads into my next question is like, who are you still like uh, closest with at the company? Is it like, is it Marshall Carl that, you know, cause I know you guys do a lot of work together. For sure. I, I mean, it, it's a weird thing, man. Cause I'm still, I've been working for two years. I'm still crazy shy. Like there's still people that I like love at this company that I've Mincy. never like. Welcome. Well, back, yeah. Mincy. I mean, <laughs> Min Mincy is, I mean, there's a lot, I mean, some, especially like, and when I get to a year, I'll tell the stories about just like some of the things that some of the people at this company did and like some of the text messages I got and, and just like the stuff that like will will have a place in my heart really for my entire life. But honestly, like Carl, obviously, I've done the most content with because of the yeah. baseball stuff and it's gone great. I love Carl. He's been incredibly kind to me and and, and, I, and I appreciate the fact. Look, I mean, I, I – I know like what people have said and the way people pick sides, but ultimately like one thing I've never really talked about is the fact that like when I got, when I got out of, of rehab, there was a part of me that's like, how damaged are you? Like, are you destined to be like, are people going to be afraid to do content with you now? Like, are you damaged goods? And so the fact that like people can say what they want, but he was the guy that reached out and was like, I want you to be a part of this. Like that was insanely humbling, but obviously like, yeah, in terms of just people I'm closest with it, it is. Like, I mean, Min Mincy has become legitimately one of my best friends. I, I mean, one day, one day we'll all write a book or make a movie about the Omaha trip in 2022 when, you know, Ole Miss won it. And, and just, you know, it's, I, I, I'm glad he's moving to Chicago. I hope at some point, you know, I, I can, we can collaborate and do more content because I, I just think, I think we work well together. Um, he makes me laugh. I make him laugh. Um, and ultimately, you know, we've just, he's been good to me. And, uh, you know, he called me the other day and, you know, right before, uh, right before he was on pick them. And, and so, yeah, I mean, obviously me and him are, are really close, but dude, there's so many people that like, I just admire that I haven't like reached out to a ton. Like, I think I, I maybe had one or two conversations with her my entire life. I think Kelly Keegs is like hysterically funny and super talented and great. Like, uh, dude, and dude. even like, dude, I could give two fucks about anything taylor swift does and i'm like i'm like enthralled by kelly <laughs> Keys. like all right like i'm taking and it just it speaks to i think what makes the company great which is we are a personality based company you know i don't i like pizza right we all do but dave reviewing pizza is enthralling to me the same way that you can take any if you find a guy on youtube with a fucking stamp collection if they deliver 
like their passion in a way that you find endearing and charming, like you can be like, you can consume it and think it's awesome. You know, um, like I, you know, another guy that I, I, I think, and I've, I actually have talked to him and told him like, I think John Rich is like one of the best hires we've ever had. Like, I, I think John Rich is like front of the show, front of the pod. Yeah, I, I know he's great on here. Like, I just think amazing. when you talk about a guy who gets it, like he's he's just taking the reins and ran with it. So, like that stuff is cool to see because a lot of these people were hired after me, and so to see the way that like because right. I, I like to think I was the class of 2021. So that was like me I'm trying to think. I know Megan was hired around there, a few other people, and it's like to see the way that they've kind of evolved and grown. Like you know. I definitely took a detour for a while, but I really hope that like I can get back to that because, um, you know, I really like as an observer, as a remote employee, like I, I read the tea leaves and I pay attention and to see the way things have grown and the way people's talents have like shined through. It's awesome. It's insanely cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, so you, I, I don't really, yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead no, you're good. No, no, I just, you had mentioned a couple of times now your sobriety, I wasn't going to bring much of it up, but you had mentioned about, um, you know, at a year you wanted to say some stuff and whatever. Do you ever think about maybe like collaborating with Jerry and maybe doing it on his podcast or doing something with him? Cause I think that um, would be awesome. Jerry's been very supportive. Um, if he reached out and wanted to do something, I'd say yes. And, and that's the big thing with, with me. And I think it's, it's a really, it's a valuable thing to have at the company is the ability to say yes to uh, different challenges and opportunities. Like one guy, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm just like, praising everybody I work with, but like one guy to me that is a prime example of like versatility is Roan. Like Roan will host most dangerous game show. Roan will do the battle rap stuff. He'll do the NBA stuff. Like if somebody reached out to me and was like, Hey, I want to do a podcast about sobriety. I'd say yes. If so, you know, Carl reached out to me and said, I want to do a baseball thing. I'd say yes. You know, it, you are at something of a disadvantage when you're remote. And so like, you know, instead of, I can't just walk across to a desk and be like, Hey, you want to do something? You know what I mean? But like, I'm, I'm open to ideas. Um, I feel like that's something you could even like, just like run like once every few months and just be like, you know, call it keep and clean. And you could have like you, Mency, Jersey, Jerry, because Mency's a clean guy too, right? Yeah. 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 He's sober too. Yeah. yeah. But he's like a fake clean. <laughs> no, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty, he's not drinking. I'm just kidding. I mean, if there's a, yeah, I was just messing because he always he always says like, yeah, I'm clean. I just do like whatever, like shrooms when I go see Great for <laughs> right. Dead or whatever, which makes like, me laugh so hard. So it's a weird thing how that works, though, because like you can be an addict and just not be addict, like and only be addicted to like certain things. Like I to help me no, sleep, I, to help me sleep, I take an edible and it's like I, I feel completely in control of it. But like if I got back into drinking, like I'm fucked. It's, it's a weird thing how that works. Like. And, and the thing with Mince too is like, and I didn't know him before he got clean, but he's high on life. Like he's just, ha he's just <laughs> yeah, happy definitely. all the time, which is, and dude, maybe that wasn't the case before he got sober, but it's like, I, like, I never get the impression. Uh, and I know Ben a lot more than I know, uh, I know Jerry, but like, I get the impression that like, you know, Mincy just feels like I don't need these things anymore. Like I'm enjoying this ride that I'm on this journey that I'm on in life. I mean, look at all the shit that was thrown his way over the last six, seven months. And like, I, I don't, I, I oh. called him. I, and this is kind of a funny story. So I was in a, I was in a Detroit hotel room uh, when the Tigers, Tigers playing the Mets and I went to a double header. And uh, when I found out Mincy was let go and I called him and you ever, you ever do one of those calls where you like, you turn your voice into a somber tone because you feel like that's going to be reciprocated. You know, it's like, you know, right. bad. And I called him and he's just so fucking enthusiastic. Like, I'm going to get through this. It's going to be great to a point where it almost made me mad. I'm like, well, can't you be upset? Like, I'm upset about this. Like, please. <laughs> yeah. um, but he just, he just kept rolling. And, um, I, you know, it's, it's great to see good things happen to good people. And karma came back around and, and like, like, dude, it's not, it, it's not Ben's Barstool Sports without Ben Mintz. So it's like, it, it was, uh, right. it was great to see him back. But obviously, yeah. And, you know, to go back to your original question, I'd, I'd be happy to do something like that. You know, I would, I think right now, you know, it's kind of a weird way to put it. Like I'm nine months in, I feel like by the time you get to a year at that point, you're like actually qualified. Like Jerry's over last time. I, I think he was seven years when I talked to him. Uh, at the dozen tournament in 2022. So, I mean, he's got to be coming up on nine, which is just incredible. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course I'd be open to that stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It just seems like, you know, it'd be cool. Like as, I think he does a podcast about sobriety, right? Jonathan, did, is that something? That... It, it was not. Okay. I, I don't it. know. The thing about these podcasts, man, is like, I know that there was that whole thing where like producers got pulled and stuff like that. I don't know if he, 
but even if it's not a podcast, I know he does a lot of stuff just helping people out. Yeah, he's I, always sharing like yeah. the recovery center yeah. he went to. Diamond Recovery is his is the one that he went to, and uh, yeah, he's always sharing that. And he he was on a podcast called Next Up with Adam Brennan, and that's when like there were a bunch of viral clips of him telling his story on there. That's what, I think that's right. maybe what you're referring to. No, yeah. I was just thinking because, you know, when, like Chris had said, like once he gets to a year, he'd like to share some more stuff. And I just thought that'd be cool for, you know, maybe Jerry to be like the mediator for that stuff. You know, if you didn't want to just sit there and do a solo video or something, that's all I meant. You know, someone that's been through it. So for sure. Yeah. also congrats yeah. on nine months, man. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been, um, it's been the, uh, it's been the most insane time of my life. And, you know, it was you know, you were open with, I was open with it and then, you know, shared a lot and didn't share a lot, but it's, uh, I'm like, the way I view it is like, what gets me through is like, what if like, cause you, you will always go back and forth. Like it's, I'll be honest, like it's hard not to sometimes feel like a piece of shit with like some of the stuff that happened. And like, this is a uh, unsurprising when you drink all the time, you end up doing a lot of stupid shit. And so it's like, sh- you know, <laughs> Um, you know, sh- shame is, can be an overwhelming emotion, but it's like, I, in the back of my head, I'm like, what if, like, how cool would it be if this is like the story? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what if, what, what right. if this is like, what defines me? Cause I, I love what I do and I love tiger baseball and talking about Michigan stuff, but it's like, I want, you know, I think like all of us, we care about our image and like how we come across to people. It's like, if this is, can, if this can be the thing that like, people know me for at this company, which is something that actually could help people like that, that, that keeps you going kind of on a day-to-day basis. You know, like I'm, I'm determined as fuck to see this thing through to the end right now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, I, I, that, that's all I got really, Frankie. Do you have any, uh, any other? Yeah. You mentioned the tigers. So I just, I got to get that out of you now. What's your favorite tigers pitcher of all time and favorite position (laughs) player of all time? Cause I just got to know. I mean, pitcher, it's it's so obvious, but dude, it is Verlander. Like, it, it, and you know what's so weird yeah, is like, I thought so. <laughs> Verlander took on this like. I didn't know if you were gonna say Turnbull because he got you the job. Maybe that's what I didn't know. <laughs> I, mean, I thought that was maybe a close call. <laughs> Turnbull, Turnbull, on a personal level, will always be my right. Guy, right. Like he has to, yeah. be, right? Um, but yeah. it's like yeah. what's weird is like Verlander became this one where. I loved him in Detroit. We all did. He won an MVP. Like there really was. I remember the year he won the MVP. Like it was, it was an event. Like I know you're a Mets fan. Like it was very similar to that year when Harvey was, or and Degrom was like that for for that period when he was yep. running Cy Youngs, where it's like every fifth yep. day, stop what the fuck you're doing and you're watching this guy pitch. But yep. like I earned this greater respect for him because like after we traded him, and the trade was awful, but it's like when we traded him, I'm like okay. He's on his last, like, he'll give him two good years. And then, and uh, every, right. like, now I keep looking. I'm like, this motherfucker is still going. Like, he's still <laughs> yeah. Yeah. at an elite level in an age in which, like, 25 year olds are blowing out their arms every other week. This guy's fucking 40 years old and he just keeps churning yeah, out quality like, stars. It's like but, him and Wainwright that still somehow are just doing it deeper. Yeah. Into and it's it like, and he's still, he's still got that fastball in the upper 90s. It's crazy. In terms of position players, you know, the obvious one is Miguel Cabrera and, like, Yes, that is that is my answer. I guess one one or two guys that I always loved. Uh, I loved JD Martinez when he was here, and that's another one that we let slip away. We traded him for yeah, nothing. That was a tough loss. Yeah, one guy. One guy I really liked, and he was here for four years, and uh, we only went to the playoffs once with him. But I love the trade, and I just love the way he played. Was Ian Kinsler? I love. I mean this with affection. I love dirtbag players. I love guys with the fucking high socks that are going to slide hard into second base, that are going to show up like lead off the game with a double. Um, he was great. He was he was one of my favorites. But yeah, I mean it's my my hope honestly because this something that just like annoys me about the Tigers is that every time we bring up positive Tiger memories, it's like oh remember ten years ago? It's like man, I want to remember now. Like can we right. can we turn a page here? So you know obviously Miggy on his way out here in a few weeks, and you know hopefully like the next generation of, of, of people can talk about like, Oh dude, like Riley green and Kerry Carpenter and Torkelson. These were my favorite players. So yeah, those are the standouts. I mean, it's, we lament like that era cause they never won a world series, but like we watched so many great players. Like it was, they had the best team in baseball multiple times and just couldn't get it done. And there's, so there's a bittersweet taste, but like I'd assemble that same roster. It was a fun group of guys to watch. Yeah. That Verlander Scherzer yeah. was Pudge your catcher then. Was it Pudge? He Pudge was from yeah. 06 to, I think, uh, 09 yeah. or 10. And then 
you know, we, I mean, we had Scherzer, like we, the pitching we had. It's insane. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, serious. it was, yeah. Yeah, Pudge was like one of the first. We had Maglio in 06. I know. I'm, I'm always thinking that the, the Tigers are going to be on a come up because my mud hens do pretty good in Toledo. Uh, right. It's weird how that works. Are you yeah. and, and like, hmm. Honestly, like, and I feel like I'm setting myself up for disappointment. I feel as good right now about the Tigers as I felt in a long time. And ultimately, like, it's it sucks because, and I've talked about this, I've said this a million times, but it really is true. When you work at this company, you are very often at the mercy of the teams that you root for. Like, I think I remember I had this conversation with Eddie about this, where like he, those guys are so passionate about the bears and they love the bears and they want to see the bears succeed. And there's like, dude, you're not giving me an entrance to the freeway here. Like they just, they're, they're D coordinators had his fucking yeah. home raided by the FBI. It's yeah, like all these, like all these horrible things are happening. It's like, I remember feeling this way when I was in Omaha with Mincy, where it's like, you know, how many people, who like fans of Barstool were huge Ole Miss baseball fans. But for that week, because of the content, everyone's like, dude, I gotta, I gotta turn out. I gotta see what like Mincy's team is yeah, doing. Yeah. Like, if when I got hired, I'm like, Oh, this will be cool. Cause like in a few years, the Tigers will be really good. And like, you know, White Sox, David, <laughs> yeah. I can have this little rivalry. And, like, we'll be doing gambling streams for the playoffs. And it's like, no, we're going to win 70 games. Like it, you really, that yeah. does yeah. like, that does kind of fuck with you to a certain extent. <laughs> At least the, uh... You're not at the point. You're not at the point that White Sox Dave is. White Sox Dave just doesn't talk about the White Sox. He, he, just, he, just, gave, he yeah. just gave up talking about. I really it. did. I have wondered though, honestly, like because I haven't. The last time I didn't know what was happening in a Tigers game was probably my junior year of high school, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it's like I do wonder if they keep underperforming or being bad. Like what the tipping point would be, where it's just like, dude, you're. Like you're just not doing yourself any favors with this. And, and it's so I, I don't know when. I don't know if it'll be like this somebody gets fired, they hire somebody I don't like, like they trade a really good player. But like I think ev even the most like ride or die people have their their turning points. Like not everybody can be frank, where it's just like you, like you're you're with them to the end. I don't know when that'll be. I hope it never comes because I that'll mean that we're we we are not good in the near future. But yeah, I have thought about that like. Dude, you got you got to give me something here. <laughs> right. Yeah. You you nailed it by the way when you said like at this company your teams you're kind of at the mercy of your teams like yeah. KFC says it all the time. There is no barstool sports if the Patriots suck. Dude, the fact exactly. that the, the Patriots won all those Super Bowls and shit just created so much drama and so much content and so much just, you know, winning in barstool content. that. Yeah. It's yeah. like just, dude, it's oh, like yeah. I would argue the city of Boston should thank Dave because like for the longest <laughs> time Boston was like, and main, it was mainly the Red Sox was the team, was the city that like constantly fumbled the bag. And it's like, so Barstool Sports gets founded in 03. The Patriots, they'd already won one at that point, but they win five more Super Bowls. The, the, the Celtics win one, the Red Sox win four, the Bruins win. It's like they became. Yeah. Like remember that one that the Red Sox broke the curse. Like it's crazy. Right, yeah. Like yeah. remember that one uh, meme? Crazy. I think it was KFC went nuts on this kid. That one kid at the Patriots parade who's like, I'm 11 years old and I've attended eight parades. And Kevin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kevin yeah. tweeted like, I want to beat up this twerp or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like you I got, did you too, got, dude. I was so mad. Right, you got to count your <laughs> blessings with that shit because it's like that's an all time heater. But it's like you got you know to Dave's credit and to the company's credit, like you take advantage of that. You know, it's like when the Cubs on the World sure. Series and like Dan was all over it. It's like, if the day, like I want the Lions to be good so bad. I want Michigan to be good so bad. And like, you know, I'm doing the videos, but like, I think everyone who knows me knows like Tigers, number one with a bullet. Like that's the, that's the, I can die in peace championship for me. And I desperately hope like we get to see it when I'm at this company. Cause I think it'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, after, after yeah. my Buckeyes kicked the shit out of the Irish, uh, this, this weekend, it, I mean, it's it's all all eyes on uh you know well Penn State another un first, undefeated but... collision course man yeah, yeah we'll see it could yeah. be it could be I don't know Penn State looks tough but they yeah. still don't scare me they're supposed to always be tough and then they never are so we'll Penn see Penn State's never yeah, yeah same we'll as Notre see. Dame I feel like Penn State and Notre Dame always get the ooh uh, watch out for them this year and then it's well, like Dave's riding Martell's Colt Hills he had him twenty to one to win the Heisman that's gonna get shattered this weekend when the Buckeyes go in there and beat him by ten on their home field <laughs> that's how it's gonna work. <laughs> It's we'll see. I mean, I think because of those first two games, people like started to undervalue Ohio State. It's so weird how that works. Like they've lost basically one game the last two years. And yeah. people are like, oh, you know, yeah. just don't know about Ohio State. Like, we'll see. 
Um, yeah, it'll be telling. We'll we'll find out a lot about him this. No, nah, I mean he he probably will get fired if he loses to Harbaugh again, though. The Buckeyes you, you fans. You think if they, they're if they go eleven line. and one and beat Penn State, so I said no. Game. I said no. I brought up this point to Brandon Walker in his space. I was like, I don't think like I'm not as spoiled as most Buckeyes fans. Like you know, to yeah. where it's like the the dude loses one game a year maybe, and like twice has been to Michigan, and like once like we we were a field goal away from the national championship, and you're ready right. to fire this guy. Like I don't know, man. Like uh, he's been a good coach, but uh, at the time, I guess of his hiring, there were better options out there. It was like Luke Fickle was out there, and like yeah. there was other guys that they could have gone for. So there's still those salty Ohio State fans that just look back on that. But no, I think Day is long. You know, if he goes eleven and one, he, I don't know. He has to. He has to win the big one. He. I'm at the point where I I, I don't want to fucking lose to Michigan again. I'm tired of those scumbags up north like you, Chris. I'm just tired of them. You know and, what's uh, so bizarre? <laughs> that I didn't I didn't realize how fun it was to beat Ohio State until we actually did it. Because the last time the last time we had done it, yeah, we're around the same age. All I know is beating Michigan. Right. It's been it's tough the, last for me. Time, the last time it happened prior to when I started working at this company was 2011. I was a sophomore in high school. And my high school was actually playing in the state championship game at Ford Field. So I was listening to the game with my dad in, in the park, Ford Field parking lot. Uh, you know, and, and that, that Ohio State team sucked, too. They were seven and six. Like that one, it counts, but like kind of. And that, yeah. <laughs> and so for the next decade, I was just accustomed to the idea of we're going to have a good year. And then we're going to get to the final boss at the end of the video game. And they're going to beat <laughs> our ass. So it's like, yeah. and then it was, you see, if there's any event at this company that I wish I had a camera on me for, it was the 2021 Ohio state game because I came into there saying, here comes the death March. Right. And by the middle of the third quarter, we're winning. And I go, fuck now, if we lose, I'm actually going to be sad because I'd made peace yeah. with the inevitable results. And yeah. now it's like, okay, you've roped me in. Now you can't lose. And it was like, yeah. And I'm, and then we won. I'm like, wow, this, this actually feels really like, I don't know what this feels like. This is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, they, but, they um, bullied us the last two years, and I'm fucking tired of it. Well, I think that's bullied. what the big concern people have. It's not that they lost to Michigan. It's no, that we're they, just getting bullied up they, and down They got field. punched in the mouth, and they got completely outcoached and outmanned on the, in the trenches, I think is like the yeah. big concern. So, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. It's a, I mean, either way, I feel like order has been restored. It comes down to Michigan-Ohio State again <laughs> every year, and yep. yeah, I guess you can't ask for much else. No, absolutely not. But, yeah, I mean, that's all I have for you, Chris. Frank, do you got anything else for him? I just had one more <clears throat> – <clears throat> Excuse me. I just had one more thing written down. What are you currently watching? TV show? Anything? Man, I honestly, I I haven't been watching a whole lot recently, other than sports and just doing writing stuff. So no, I mean, I haven't, I haven't really kept up with a whole lot, other than like the stuff that I just watch, like recreationally and quote and post clips of like my my spongebob yeah. clips and shit like that but um no it's it's honestly uh it's honestly been a minute since i've really kind of watched uh anything substantial i guess one thing recently that i watched and it's been a minute but like on my favorite television show of all time is nathan for you i think it's the funniest fucking thing that's ever existed and i thought the rehearsal which was his follow-up to that was brilliant as well maybe not as funny as nathan for you was but it was on hbo i thought that was great uh, I know a lot of people at the company that that love Nathan Fielder, and I'm definitely one of the biggest. So I definitely recommend uh, people watch that. But besides that, man, when it's when it's sports are sports are my TV show. Like that is that is that's the greatest yeah. form of reality TV that there is. So uh, yeah, I, I, I right now it's just kind of locked into watching sports stuff. Agreed. Outside no, of, I, outside I, of the, outside of the Giants' uh, win streak this this summer, I had nothing to watch. But they, summers are rough. Wait, uh, yeah. I mean, as a baseball fan, it works for me, but like, yeah, those are the, those are the months that like people have a hard Dog time days. with it's, it's, Cause dude, especially if, if you have a shitty baseball team, like that's the one yeah, the thing man. fine for a while. And I, I'm so tired of Kaplan's bullshit. Too. Right. It's it, but like, at least you guys were like competitive until like, I, I mean, they're still technically in it, but like, at least there right. was a run there. Like, that's the thing. If you are a hard motherfucker, if you have to go through a, a rough baseball season, because like, I, like, I understand that like the lions have been shit, but like, that's like 14 bad days. Like when you, we're talking a, you know, tigers lost 114 games four years ago. Like I'm not, I'm not weeping. I'm not weeping for anybody. Um, so yeah, no, I, I feel you, man. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, man. That's really, I was asking just because I don't really watch anything either. My like coworkers usually ask me for recommendations on stuff and, mm -hmm. Within the, like the past year or so, I've been like, I literally just only listen to Barstool podcasts. So if you don't want to talk about that, then sorry, I got nothing for you. So <laughs> right. figured no, if I ever watch anything, 
Yeah. yeah I mean, figured if I watched anything about, ever, I'd ask you. So I'm glad you gave yeah. me something at least. <laughs> I mean, you talk about the ultimate reality show. That's what Barstool is, right? You know, I mean, oh, like, yeah, that's, that's right. Always, yeah, for sure. Most dangerous yeah. game, speaking of, going right now. <laughs> yeah, finale. Who do, you, who do you think is going to win in that? Uh, I know, so I'm not going to say. Okay, oh, shit. That's Sorry. <laughs> that's no, it's, it's, right. it's fine. I just, but, you know, I, the thing is with that stuff, it's like it with a dozen, too. Like, I would rather, like, I would rather lose my job than spoil like one of these things. Cause especially right, yeah, when, you're, right. when you're like, it's with a dozen, when you're like a paying attention to the behind the scenes stuff, like these people work so fucking hard, dude. Like yeah. the, the production people, the behind the scenes people, the content people, especially with most dangerous game. Like I, you, you're getting content people going out. Like they're, they, they're legitimately like literally going through shit on, on this stuff. So it's like, yeah, yeah I, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil, but I definitely recommend people watch it because I know how hard you know people work on that stuff. Oh yeah, it's an amazing show, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I mean, thank you, thank you, Chris. We appreciate like your support so far. We we appreciate you coming on, and uh, yeah, that, that, you know, talking to you for an hour has been a pleasure, man. And I can't wait to move back to Toledo. I t I'm gonna hit you up for at least like a Mud Hens game or come for up sure. to Detroit yeah. and catch a Tigers one with you. For sure, yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll hit you guys up soon. I appreciate it. Obviously, you know, I mean, to the the stoolies who are listening to this, obviously, look, man, it's been uh, it's been it's it's not been the 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 smoothest road but i really like you know i'll bitch in all moment but i really genuinely appreciate the support you guys have shown in person online what have you and you know this is uh th this is an amazing place to work like i said earlier because of the people and that includes the fans so thank you guys appreciate it absolutely no we appreciate you man and we hope nothing for the best for you in the future and we just want to say good luck man thank you guys all right we hope you guys enjoyed that interview with castellani and you learned a few things you didn't know already and now it's time for the Breakdown Boys 26 and 1 to go back in the dozen, go undefeated again. I don't know what the categories are today, but I, I did see a tweet from uh, Jeff D. Lowe. It said that this is closest to like actual dozen questions. And if you do it, you'll, oh, you'll, 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 you'll be pretty decent. But it, that, my guess is it's going to be pretty hard today. In 2008, this AFC West team won the division despite an 8 and 8 record, beating the Colts in the wild card round before losing to the Steelers. Chargers. Broncos, Texans. It's the Chargers, right? Chargers or Broncos? Two thousand eight. Eight and eight. Who did? Oh, I was on. I was muted. Shit. I, I said the Chargers it? like five times. It's the Chargers. Oh. Oh, I was gonna say they lost to the Steelers. So. No, I was muted. That's my fault. No, oh, you're good. Oh fuck, golf. I'm fucked on this. Jose Maria something paired with his fellow Spaniard and five-time major champion to form this best duo in Ryder Cup history, posting 11-2-2 two and two record over four events. I have no fucking clue. Nothing. Nope. Skip. <laughs> DJ White was Big Ten Player of the Year in 2007-2008. I know this one. The last time the school had a player win the award. It's Indiana, That's right? the Hoosiers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. It's to say that's... Sir, fuck books, dude. I don't know books either. 2013 Stephen King horror novel, Dr. Sleep, was the sequel to what 1977 classic? I don't know books, bro. Stephen King. I mean, what's like his famous <sighs> shit? See, the I don't, I don't isn't know. he like, isn't he the shining guy? That's a movie. Yeah, no, I think it's a Stephen King novel, though. Like, oh, well, see, I, I, I said that way too confidently. I'm very sorry because I know it's yeah. a movie, but I have no clue if it's a book or not. I'm pretty sure it's, to a, put? it's a movie based off a book. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's it. Oh shit, Stephen King. Yeah, he he gets shouts out in The Shining. Shout out The Shining. It's oh, a very I, scary movie. I just yeah, I say I just know fucking Jack Nicholson. Oh shit, that's the freaking Joel. That's Billy Joel. Shout out freaking I don't know. Are you sure? I was until you said that. Kind of looks like yeah, Bruce. Come on. Oh, that's who I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 oh but not Billy you, you meant Bruce Springsteen. Oh right? my god. Bruce Springsteen. Absolutely. That's exactly who I was talking about. Yeah, I was like, who the wow. fuck? It does not look like Billy Joel to me. 
I have no idea on oh, the motor, wow. though. Um, she looks familiar. Hang on. Yeah, I don't know. No clue on the model. Oh, God. I feel like I know that. Like, she has a small-ass nose. Uh, it's not like Selma Hayek, right, or whatever her name is. She doesn't have blue eyes. Is that blue eyes that she has? I can't tell. I, I have know. no clue. I'm putting yeah, Selma I Hayek. Lose, I lose on the middle for sure. Definitely not Billy Joel, though. <laughs> I don't even know how to fucking spell her name, dude. God damn it. Fuck it. I was putting nothing for now. Snacks and candy. Identify the snack product pick with pop chips. That's fucking easy. I eat them motherfuckers all the time. TV. Sterling K. Brown won lead actor Emmy in 2017 for this This Is Us and supporting actor Emmy for this limited FX series the previous year for his role as lawyer Christopher Darden. Christopher Darden. That's OJ's lawyer. Is it? Oh, they had that 100%. thing on Netflix. He was the guy that started his own thing. Didn't they have like a little docuseries on Netflix? Netflix or whatever? Or no, it was it FX? What, was it, what does it say? Mm-hmm. There was one on FX. It was Cuba Gooding Jr. was the guy, and freaking Ross from Friends was in it. That's this the, thing. That's got to be this. What was? But that was just called OJ Simpson trial or whatever. It was like the people versus OJ. Oh, Simpson. there it is. Yeah. Okay, that's it. All right, the two stars of 1995's Crimson Tide, Denzel Washington and this actor, have each won Best Actor and Supporting Actor Oscars. I'm pretty sure... You're saying it's an old white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, What's his name? I think his name was Gene. But I don't Gene know Hackman? Is that his name? Yeah, that guy. Gene Hackman? I don't know. That's the only Gene I know. Yeah, he's the, he's the assistant coach, isn't he? So, oh, shit, there's a lot of Gene. Gene's Gene Hackman. That's is, he's an old white guy. Yeah, that's the assistant coach. There's Gene the Gene Wilder. Oh, None of these look good. It's Hackman. There you yeah. go. Oh. It's the I don't even know that movie straight up. I just know the name. <laughs> really? Oh God! Harry Styles no released clue. this self-titled debut solo album in 2017, and his first single, "This Ballad," no reached number four. Damn it! I couldn't. I couldn't name one Harry Styles song. I don't even know how to say his name right. So yeah, no, I don't know. Um, how about rub you the right way? Fuck, cool. damn, no clue on golf. Golf. Spain Sergio name. is a golf name, right? Sergio Garcia. It's got Sergio it. Garcia. Come on. Oh, that would have been no. sick. Who is it? I wonder what to show you after. Now this fucking one. This is definitely Springsteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know in the middle. I can't believe I said that before. Fuck, dude, who is that? Give me one second, because I feel like I know this. God, I feel like I know who it is, and I can't. I keep thinking like Salma Hayek and Penelope Cruz, but it's not. I'm thinking of a literal white lady with blonde hair. No clue. Cool. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Give up. Mm, it's not the Dario. Let's just do the Dario just for Nick. I mean, even if we use the double dip, we're not getting them right, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Damn, that what was, was our that? worst ever, man. That's that was pretty. It's not bad. That was hard. Let's see. The golf was never would have had it. Ballast Doris. Ballast Doris. Yeah. Wouldn't say not. Don't even know who that is. Um, Kelly Ripoff. I have no clue who that is. That's literally what I was picturing in my head. I have no clue who that That's is. That's Regis and Kelly, dude. Oh, oh, my God. Michael and Kelly, the freaking Michael Strahan. Like, oh, my God. It's so her, too, that knows. Fuck, dude. I knew that one. I I, I would have never got that name, though. Fuck. 
sign of the times. I would have never, never heard, heard that of either. It. So, all Probably. right. Who, well, I, I'm pretty sure that's a Kirk written dozen. Kirk Kirk Minahan wrote those questions. That's why we did so bad. Yeah, that was insane. The golf. I don't know shit about golf. The fact that we even got the book was crazy. Like that was almost like a guess, unless you knew that. Like that was just, no, I, I just Gene Hackman. This. This is like. <laughs> I feel like we got lucky as fuck on some of those too. So I feel like Gene Hackman's pretty Take known it. for that role. But yeah, uh, you know, not our best performance. I, but, I just, you know. I literally haven't seen the movie. So the fact that I got it, I was, I just knew yeah. the name. When you said Gene, that's the only Gene I knew besides Gene Wilder, <laughs> which I knew it wasn't Willy Wonka. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just makes it all that, all that much more fun to be here on uh, Barstool Breakdown. Absolutely. Viva. <laughs> It's the Barstool Breakdown Go ahead and give it to me Breakdown messes to those guys Breakdown What's happening at Barstool this week? Breakdown is poor time It's poor